Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I have for you today episode 4.3 in the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. The title of this episode 4.3 is The Great Deceiver Who Plays Black Magic Tricks on Humans. I have for you a quote from Revelation 12, the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. This is verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And next I have a quote from Revelation 13, verses 11 to 15. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and caused that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And here's my commentary. In the context of the above biblical quotes, Satan is said to have frightening psychic powers, including the ability to cause fire to rain down on earth and the power to animate an idol or statue and cause it to speak. It seems to me that psychic powers such as these might be used by human beings for good or for bad. But where Satan comes into the picture, psychic powers can result in acts of great evil. Thus, when we see a psychic event taking place, we have to stop and think, why did that happen? Was it the hand of God moving across the earth? Or did Satan just step in to tempt me? For instance, according to Wikipedia, the Baal Shem, that's B-A-A-L-S-H-E-M, of Jewish history was a magician of the practical Kabbalah who was able to speak the names of God, angels, Satan, and other spirits to work miracles. For instance, he might heal the sick or perform an exorcism or protect people from fire, theft, or the evil eye. He might prophesy or interpret people's dreams. And this I got from a Wikipedia article named Baal Shem. There is a good question, I feel, when a person of any faith uses psychic powers in a practical way whether he is doing good or bad. 
whether he is aligned with the will of God or with the will of Satan, who, as the great deceiver, can perform miracles as well. Here is a subsection called Animation of Inanimate Objects Through Magic. In Exodus 7, verses 6 to 12, there is a description of Moses and Darren in the role of the good magician, dueling with the servants of the Pharaoh who were in the role of bad magicians in an attempt to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Here are the biblical verses. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. To continue with the commentary, thus the quality of animating an inanimate object described in Revelation 13:15 as a power wielded by Satan was one of the tricks that both good and bad magicians in biblical days used to gain power over people and get wealth from them as the people were frightened when such inexplicable things occurred. From that misuse of psychic power by humans, I feel, it may be that there came about the stipulation not to worship false idols or graven images. Here is a sub-subsection entitled, Natural Disasters Caused by Magic. It goes like this. Exodus goes on to explain the visiting through the psychic powers of Moses and Aaron of natural disasters upon Egypt. For instance, in Exodus 7, verses 20 and 21, we have, And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. to continue with the commentary. And then, at Moses' request, God inflicted more plagues upon Pharaoh and his people. Plagues of frogs, lice, flies, injury to livestock, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and death of firstborn children. It is in Exodus 10, verses 21 and 22, that the plague of darkness is described. It goes like this, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. 
And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. To continue with the commentary, in a similar but opposite manner, the Israelite leader Joshua is said to have, through God's intercession, stopped darkness from descending, staying the path of the sun across the heavens during a battle at Gibeon. Note also, God himself is credited with raining down hailstones upon the enemy, perhaps without having been asked to do so. Here is Joshua 10, verses 8 to 14. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not be a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Machedah. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down to Beth Oron, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. There were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ahalan. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. To continue with the commentary, these two instances, one of the descent of darkness and another of prevention of its descent, seem to me to be of a depth of scope equal to the feat of making fire come down from heaven, which is attributed to Satan in Revelation 13, verse 13. I feel that these powers of human magicians to cause natural disasters might, as is attributed to be the case with the petitions of Moses and Aaron, be granted through the grace of God. On the other hand, Revelation 13, verse 13, might speak of a ploy of Satan to get human beings to worship him instead of God. When Satan succeeds in this ruse, he may sweep into the mind of a human magician with his insinuations of evil thoughts and evil actions and turn the person to the dreaded path of black magic. That unfortunate possibility is all the more likely when the psychic or magician exercises psychic powers simply for his personal gain or else on behalf of his own religion or tribe or culture 
or nation, rather than for the good of all beings everywhere. The path of partiality in the exercise of psychic powers alters the person's soul much for the worse and destines him to the hell worlds after death. That thought puts Moses and Aaron in the limelight with the question, were their actions aligned with the will of God or were they black magic exercised with partiality to a particular tribe? Well, dear ones, this earth is quite the realm of duality and the image we see of earth and her beings is but our soul's projection of a hologram or hollow game to help a soul learn a particular soul lesson. So say I as a light worker here on earth at the time of ascension. What soul lesson was it that Moses and Aaron hoped to learn through exercises of their magical powers. What did the great judge of all whisper in their ear when their earthly time was done? This none but they can say. Without a doubt, this is a very difficult question. How to deal with the gift of psychic powers? How then to find our way safely back home and into the welcoming arms of God. For those of you, my readers, who find yourself saddled with such awesome psychic powers, I suggest laying low and watching the wind blow. As my father used to say, through humility, may we not conquer the dragon of our own pride in our works? What better way may there be to draw near to God than to worship Him as the doer of all and to ask Him to be our hands, our feet, the thoughts that form in our minds, and the words that issue from our mouths? I have for you three images to do with this section. The first is Satan Roasting People in Hell from the Poetical Works of John Milton by John Milton, 1695. Um, it's a very traditional image of Satan. That's Satan at the top there. You can see the wings and the horns. And though people that he's roasting in hell beneath him. Um, this, this image to me uh, is symbolic of the fact that by listening to Satan and being deceived by Satan, we can injure our bodies of light and that they may be darkened or speckled in places with darkness so that after we pass on, those bodies of light will need to be purified in order for us, for us to be um, once again healthy and whole in the afterlife or for those that believe in reincarnation in the many lives thereafter. So the notion of hell that I have is not of punishment but rather of cause and effect. By listening to Satan we cause the darkening of our bodies of light which must be rectified after we pass on. And Here's a good image of that. I have next a statue said to be of the head of Satan called the Power Brutal. The description is the brutal power sculpture on the Aloag Santo Domingo Road in Ecuador represents Satan, measures 20 meters high, and is located on the side of a mountain next to the road 30 meters above the ground. El Poder Brutal, it means the brutal power. I can imagine what it must be like to go past this image on the road. 
you can see a delight in cruelty. Um, yet Satan may appear to be um, completely different when he whispers to us. He may appear to be our very best friend, but the actual quality, I feel, is of Satan is well captured in this massive sculpture. You see how very cruel he looks. He's not really a person. You know, he's more like an animal. So it's important to learn to distinguish um, when we gain the ability to do quote-unquote miracles, what our inspiration might be. You might be well deceived in that. Or you might be following God's will, I feel, as mentioned priorly. The last image I have for you is a painting called Joshua Commanding the Sun to Stand Still by John Martin, 1848, in Wikimedia Commons. It's just very dramatic. It's nicely colorized. And I believe it's the second such image he did of the same miracle of the sun standing still, which we talked about earlier. You can see all the people looking up, the blue sky overhead, and the clouds indicate in a way that something unusual is going on because they're, they look a little dynamic, maybe even a little tumultuous. And so that is the art documentation of the miracle spoken of in, in the Bible of the sun standing still at the behest of Joshua and brought about by God himself, this being an example of, of a really good miracle. That's all for now, dear ones. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.